Welcome to Get It Done Entrepreneurs, where we talk with founders of companies who bet on themselves in one. My name is Rich Lebrun, and I am the founder and CEO of Lebrun Advisory Group. You can find us at rlebrun.com. Our mission is to help our clients build wealth through business ownership. Stick around to the end of the show, and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. Our special guest today is Rosalind Panda. She is CEO and founder of Rosalind Business Group, LLC. In fact, buckle your seatbelt. She's got a lot of companies here. She's CEO of Rosalind IT Services, founder of Rosalind Arts, CEO of Rosalind Constructions. She's also a founder of crypto, a cryptocurrency called Rova Token, which we'll learn a little bit more about. And she's a founder of the nonprofit organization called Rosalind Prasad Foundation, Inc., she is a technology innovator, fine arts, fine art artist, public speaker, author, and influencer. Additionally, she is on the board of members of the nonprofit organization called River Artworks. For her incredible contribution to the community and across the world in the field of art, technology, innovation, and creative design thinking, Rosalind Panda, Rosalind Business Group LLC, is featured in many high-profile publications and news agencies such as Forbes, US, she's actually on the cover of US, USA Today, US News, Fox News, CNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS. She is also featured in the International Association of Women as an influencer and, and appeared as the top 10 CEOs of 2022 in New York Weekly. Here's some fun facts about Rosalind. She's a brown belt in mixed martial arts, ta taekwondo, and she composes music and sings a song. In addition, she has received recognition in Indian classical music. Rosalind is from initially from Odisha, India, India, and she is in the USA now since 2070 and currently resides in New York. And Rosalind, I can't believe I even get a chance to talk with you. You're such a busy woman. How are you today? I'm doing excellent. Thank you so much for the warm welcome, Rich. I loved it thoroughly. Yeah. Great. Well, I don't, it's kind of interesting. We're going to start here because you have multiple companies. So we can, I want to kind of take you back maybe to your first company uh, when you first decided to be an entrepreneur. Uh, our listeners love to hear the stories of our guests. You know, was starting a business, was it easy? Was it hard? What was the motivation behind it? We'll talk a little bit about the things that you learned, things that you did right, things that maybe you would do differently. But nonetheless, Rosalind, tell us your story. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rich. It's a wonderful question. I always love it. So to start with my story, I would say that um, I'm a purpose, a person who is driven by purpose in life and passion. So <clears throat> since my childhood, I have been um, uh, pretty uh, creative and uh, driven towards, fascinated about uh, technology, uh, just curiosity, driven by curiosity learning, especially learning. And when it comes to art, uh, creating artworks and writing poems around them, expressing my thoughts and emotions on, on paper uh, through uh, writing books, articles, and essays, things like that. So I definitely find a lot of pleasure uh, putting my creativity into some form. Um, that's what uh, just drives me forward in my art, technology, and innovation. Especially technology. When it uh, when you say technology, it's um, maybe twenty years, twenty five years. We are pretty active about that. So since last fifteen years, more than fifteen years, I have been contributing to the technology world and um, working with multiple companies and helping them with their. Uh, development, architecting their uh, applications, and uh, pretty like fairly, uh, I believe few few years back only I moved into innovation. So uh, added another dimension to my my day to day life, which is innovation. So I'm driven by art and technology and innovation and creative design thinking, as you mentioned earlier. Well, you, you kind of pick some polar opposites, you know, technology and arts, you know, a lot of people kind of pick one lane or the other, and you've actually been able to pick both lanes, which is fantastic. Uh, what was your first company you started? Um, it was Rosalind Arts, which is my first company. Uh, when I 
started uh, my professional career uh, around 14 years back um, in art. I started creating more and more paintings, oil paintings, and I knew that this is going to grow over the period of time, which I uh, got settled down in my life as well, so that I can give a lot of time and focus to my creation process. And in 2018, I registered my company, my Rosalind Arts, to give it more value and uh, a proper uh, channel to start with. Uh, So that's how my first company journey started. So you are at the you actually do the is it oil painting you do do or yeah I specialize in oil painting I just love the texture of oil how it comes out and how it creates the texture on canvas I just love that so I specialize in oil painting okay so you paint and you sell your artwork and uh, and that's kind of what your company does there okay yeah. you also but then you jump to the other side technology where where did would you where did you catch that bug or that idea that got you excited the other side of the, my... the other side of the brain they say <laughs> yeah absolutely so in my college my background my education is in computer science um i would say that since growing up i had a pretty uh, good inclination towards science math mathematics and uh, like how things work and curious world, physics, chemistry, et cetera. But that just trickled down to having computer science as I grew up and I did my studies in um, California as well in uh, 2012. So since 2007, I have been in uh, US and uh, I did my refreshed my studies in California as well. And my background is in computer science, computer application. So I just love that area where uh, you, your brain works on the other side. It's very pretty technical. But I consider that as part of creativity as well. Because as a human being, we cannot just separate art and technology into two totally different uh, sides. But for me, I blend them together. It helps me balance. It helps my technology side and my art side. Both I find pretty uh, pretty uh, uh, creative to me. Both are, which innovation is in the middle. So I always believe art, technology, and innovation, they're all part of my life. They're not segregated in my mind or my, uh, my actions. Yeah. Okay, again, it's fascinating. I just have to ask you a couple more questions about the companies. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, Rosalind Constructions, what's what does that do? Yeah, Rosalind Construction, uh, we utilize the uh, CAD-based uh, 3D modeling technology to offer okay. the construction companies and the architecture forms the tools to visualize the complex projects. So normally what we do is we focused on the still detailing and the architecture of any construction project that a client intend to do so. So that's where con- Rosalind construction in coming into play. We also okay. help with interior designing, decoration, and um, uh, mostly construction side, and it's growing. Yeah. Okay, so you applied your technology to the construction industry, great. Okay, mm-hmm. well then you just must've been bored one day and then you decide, well, I need to start a cryptocurrency token. <laughs> All right, come on, you gotta fess up, how did that come about? <laughs> No, I didn't get bored. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, uh, I would say that it's kind of in my blood, <laughs> in my nature, that uh, since growing up, as I said, I was involved in, involved in many directions. Like my, I explore all my areas, what I really like, what my passion is about. And uh, the bigger vision I focus that how can I serve the humanity through my businesses, through uh, my passion, what I'm passionate about and how I can nourish my skill sets. And I find the pleasure in what I do and in a bigger scale that is going to serve the humanity. So when it comes to technology, I didn't restrict myself in that zone. Rather, I just, I'm fascinated with uh, technology advancement and especially we live in the present, but we prepare for the future. And Aroba, uh, the cryptocurrency is future, future digital currency. So how can we be separated from that? So I 
uh, me and my fiance, we just uh, thought about innovating and founding my new company, which is the Rova ecosystem, which is world's first utility-based ecosystem um, and crypto ecosystem. So we thought about, we are aiming to serve the humanity through technology advancement and innovation, which the real world, the people can interact with and can be benefited in the real world utilities. So that's where uh, Rova ecosystems uh, so that's that's yeah. fun. that's fantastic. Okay, so let's look back. Okay, again, I'm just gonna say you've been an entrepreneur. Let me kind of categorize all these together. Uh, you've been doing this for a while now. Is there some things that you would look back on and say, you know, now what I know today, if I knew what I knew today, I would do a couple of these things differently in the past. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, I would say that always there is a room for improvement. I don't regret anything that we do because I uh, uh, really admire myself and encourage myself every day. Um, but if we say that I want, wanted to do it differently, I would say whatever I'm doing currently, I could have started a little earlier, <laughs> you know? So that's that's where I believe that in the um, chronological order of my life, if I could have done a little earlier, like my uh, established my companies, I would have seen more progress and things, but I always believe that in timing as well in life, uh, because sometimes the time is preparing you for something bigger where um, th- there are some foundations to be built before we get into real world business. So I don't regret, but definitely always early starting point is really benef- it benefits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Life has a way of preparing us for the moment. You yeah. know. Uh, yeah, great. On the other hand, you've been very successful. Okay. And um, is there any key one or two decisions that you made that, that was really monumental for your success? Yeah, I would say that I I measured the success by uh, fulfillment and progress, fulfillment, and what we are serving into into the society how we are benefiting the mankind what is the bigger vis- vision or purpose that we are serving on earth so that attitude and mentality it is just keeps me going i never i don't get frustrated i don't uh, get agitated by when things are not going exactly how we want it to happen right so that's kind of the attitude i got from life by being mature and going through scenarios and seeing that not whatever we think all the time, it doesn't exactly go how it's supposed to. So we have to be prepared when it's, things are not going right. What is the attitude we are having that time? I believe that is what uh, makes me happy in every situation instead of measuring uh, and thinking that it's or comparing myself to others I just create my own way or create the opportunity uh, for myself and in the long run for others that's my always my target to do so where there is a bigger vision so that just uh, keeps me going I would say that's that's the biggest secret okay (laughs) that attitude yeah well it sounds like uh, this is going to come into play to our second half of the question in fact I'm going to hold that for a second um let's take a commercial break how's that now, you yes, have multiple please. companies you can talk about anyone all of them together but our listeners are going to want to know how you know who your customer is and more about your company you know, specifically that they can maybe listen to and share with others mm-hmm. so my it services company i would say that's the really big highlight which is a really a top-notch IT consulting company that we are helping across the United States and around the world. And we specialize in uh, Web 2.0, um, ERP solutions, Web Web 3 technologies, uh, mobile and web applications, desktop applications. And we are not limited to any industry. We believe, believe that clients uh, are looking for help in every industry. So we are pretty open to um, s- small size, medium and enterprise level clients we're helping with. So I, I really find uh, 
true passion and uh, pleasure when I am able to help clients with their um, I either migrating their own current existing project or new projects they want they want to build they see on the horizon I love to turn their vision into reality so uh, and also uh, a part of branch of my IT, Rosalind IT services company, staffing and recruiting. So we we help candidates across the United States to place them in their uh, desired role uh, based on their skill sets and experiences. So that's that's coming under staffing and recruitment. Yeah. And um, uh, if I add... Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if I add uh, Rosalind Arts, right, I, will, I can add a little more to that. That when I'm creating, uh, I, I normally uh, create artworks in uh, different realms, in different genres like abstract, landscape, impressionistic, contemporary, modern. And every painting, it just holds an underlying message uh, which says, which focuses on love towards humanity, positive, positivity, um, optimism enthusiasm and all the positive aspects of life uh, where um, a human being, those indispensable elements, every human being need in their lives. So I um, normally uh, do that through Rosalind Arts. And I recently wrote a book as well, which is, it's available on Amazon, which is called Let's Self Become the Leader. It's, this book mentions the 10 foundational principles um, in in one human being's life, and it, it will shape and uh, change and build somebody's life. Those are the very required um, foundations in human life. So that is available. Just wanted to mention that as well. So yeah. you found time to write a book. Amen. <laughs> yeah, there are two more books in in uh, progress as well. I love to write. Yeah. <laughs> This curious is the painting that's behind you for people who are going to watch this on YouTube. Is that something you've painted? Yes, yes, of course. I, I painted all my paintings that are <laughs> with me. Yes, it, it's a beautiful piece of art. <laughs> yeah, thank you. The name of this painting is Entrancing, Entrancing View. Yeah, it's all from my imagination that I create. Yeah, I can, I can see that it's very entrancing. All right, mm-hmm. let's switch to the other part, uh, which. Um, you, you know, you're an innovator, you're creative, uh, you, you've you covered a lot of categories of business industries. And so you were affected by the 2022 array of headwinds, labor and interest rates and supply chain and, you know, wars and political unrest, all everything that we got all in last year. And we are carrying a lot of that into 2023. So as a company or companies, a series of companies, how are you navigating or planning to navigate 2023? Do you see it as an opportunity of time to invest, a time to uh, expand, or a time to retreat? Because that's the first question. And the mm-hmm. second question is more personal. Okay, and I, and I, It's really how do you keep yourself motivated and targeted to be the leader? And so, you know, you have to get up Monday morning and lead the charge, right? You got to set the vision and, and mission in motion. So, uh, one is from the company side and one is an individual side. So tell me, how are you addressing 2023? <laughs> I would say that I keep myself uh, pretty uh, unaffected by the external factors. Uh, still, what, what happens in the society, community, and the world, we're definitely impacted by the decisions which are taking place outside. But I keep my mental stability into myself which is, I know if we, that is the biggest threat in every human being. So I focus on that because I have been very, uh, I'm a self-disciplined person. And uh, also I meditate, I keep my calm time. Um, and then I just give myself the strength uh, to our uh, strength and stamina and the understanding of how to navigate through this um, ongoing or of the things that are affecting from an external point of view. So I kind of try to keep myself, not, not be totally affected by that. Um, and uh, when it comes to uh, different news like war and uh, uh, the political crisis, the 
economical crisis that you mentioned, um, everybody gets impacted to a certain extent. Um, but I just try to, in, in those cases and scenarios, I try to uh, not take uh, like the terrible risks, which might I will regret later. Rather, I take slower steps that time when I'm thinking like, oh, I, I feel like this is uncertain or I'm not sure. Uh, let me take my steps a little slowly so that I can navigate faster in the future. That's, that's the stability we need in the mind uh, instead of being forceful on when we are not feeling like it's not about being in the comfort zone, but it, I definitely keep myself in the uncomfortable zone. Always try to explore and new new eras and dimensions. But it's just that I uh, have that self-discipline in myself, which I like to have that stability and balance. Um, and uh, I, I believe life is his journey. So there is no competition uh, with the outside world. I compete with myself that am I better the next day? Am I better uh, making progress or not? I So if I'm making progress, doesn't matter if it's a little slow or the next day is really big progress. I pat myself on my back. I'm like, yes, that's, that's totally fine. As a human being, we cannot be exactly 100% every day, but, but because, but we are trying our best, right? We are all trying our best. So I don't, uh, I encourage myself every day to get up and then be fully enthusiastic in what we are doing in our day-to-day -day life. That's that kind of attitude keeps me going. When it comes to professional progress, I know that really impacts by, uh, gets impacted by others. And because we are dealing with clients, we are dealing with human beings in our day-to-day -day life when you are doing um, any businesses. Uh, and I believe that we... Uh, the true relationships, the genuine relationship that we build with in a professional level, those take time. Those take time. We, I don't get, I don't force myself to uh, expect the result right away when it involves two, two parties and uh, building a proper and genuine relationship. Uh, it's rather that time, patience is the key. Patience is a really big trait that helps us navigate through that certain period of time and to build a long lasting relationship without any bad expectations, but having a positive expectation, positive enthusiasm and positive action. Everything is all related and reflects in our day-to-day -day life. So that's how I just go, go, go uh, in the flow with, uh, with my businesses. Yeah. Very and <laughs> If I right. had to mention, add to about the 20, 2023, I will I will do the same attitude. Maybe uh, the thing is, I have few things uh, to tackle this year for sure to expand my businesses, so to scale scale up uh, my businesses, my reach. Because initially, initial stage of your business, you need to establish, you need to build relationships, you need to be known and exposure exposure into the society, into the community. And as that phase is done, then the next phase is to fundraise and look for how to scale up a, a businesses so that you, your team can grow and you can create more opportunities for others. So that's my end goal anyways, to create opportunity for others so that everybody can bring their best into uh, what they are doing in their day-to-day -day life. No matter if it is art, technology, or innovation field, I have these businesses for others to enjoy. And I believe in dream work. Teamwork is dream work. So I always um, encourage others to well, build that wonderful culture and I will keep continuing that. Yeah. I love that. Um, teamwork, well, you have to believe in teamwork because how do you, I mean, you're, you're the CEO, founder of multiple companies and serve on boards uh, in, in, for foundations and nonprofits. How do you managing your time to do that? Yeah, so if I say that, how am I doing that in my adulthood, I would definitely connect that to my childhood, because I, I am growing up in my family, uh, my parents are very encouraging, they are truly encouraging, I will give a lot of credit to them, that how they uh, 
made me uh, self-disciplined in a way that I can explore all my areas and allocate my time to certain things. Like when I was a kid also, I was learning music. I was writing music that time. I was uh, playing harmonium. I was doing uh, martial arts. I was uh, studying in my school. I was going from cities to cities to do debate competition, speech competition, and many other competitions and sports meetup and other meetups, learning um, uh, meetups as well. So, and to, to explore the world and know how the world it is exactly, not to be restricted in the small, our own bubble, but explore the world, how it is, how experience what you can be, how, what you can be exactly in future. So that's the same trait I'm carrying now as well in my adulthood. So I, I know that if I am doing certain thing today uh, and it is occupied, my today is occupied, I think, okay, let's, let me tackle the other thing next day. But there are certain things to be taken care of in the same day. So I do those. I, I prioritize are my actions. What is needed to be prioritized today? Is something waiting on this? So I give my priority onto that. Is there a deadline? <laughs> you know, sometimes you cannot miss those deadlines because it's not controlled by anybody, but it's for same for everybody. So I kind of prioritize and think about is there a timeline I to be finished that, okay, let me prioritize this today. And uh, if I have to go somewhere, visit a place or create an artwork, so then I keep that for, uh, um, I allocate my time for that. Uh, that's my creative time. But I definitely uh, do my cre creation process every day. Like after my, before I sleep, I, that's my meditation time. Like I create, I think, I write, I read, and then uh, prepare uh, patiently for the next day. So um, yeah, it's just multiple things. I'm built that way, I would say. <laughs> sounds like that. I love to do like stuff. It. And we will give credit to your parents. Good job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you for being on your show. Um, what's the best way to our listeners, for our listeners, excuse me, to get a hold of you, hold of you should they feel like they could be interested in your services? Yeah, absolutely. So my, my main website, which is uh, Rosalind, uh, panda.com. Uh, if you land on my website, you can see all my businesses also are linked to their respective websites like Rosalind Arts, Rosalind IT Services, Rosalind Constructions, and robotoken.com. I am available on uh, Facebook with Rosalind Panda, on LinkedIn as well with Rosalind Panda, and on Twitter, Rosa Jubilee. That's my username uh, my handle and in on instagram rosalind panda 5 and on tiktok just uh, <laughs> rosalind panda 1 so all my websites and details are pretty well um, documented if you land on my rosalindpanda.com where you can find those respective uh, websites and services yeah fantastic we will put all that information in the notes uh, for the podcast, which will be aired in about two to three weeks. It'll be on all uh, podcast platforms as well as the video on YouTube. Rosalind, I just want to say thank you again. You're a busy person, so you, for you to carve time out to be on our podcast, I'm extremely grateful that for you for you to be here and for your willingness and generosity to share your insights with our listeners. Yeah, absolutely. I enjoyed it thoroughly, um, uh, Rich. And um, also, I would add one thing that uh, for my robot token, people can also join our Twitter and Discord because a lot of updates are getting uh, announced there. So I would love my audience to be navigated to those Discord and Twitter. Um, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you so much. And I'm honored and humbled to be Thank on Thank you show. again. And I hope you have a great day. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Rich LeBrun here. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Get It Done Entrepreneurs. If you are a successful business owner who would like to be on this program, please visit us at rlebrun.com forward slash podcast and fill out the form and we will reach out to you. If you got something out of this interview, would you share this episode on social media? 
Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag GetItDoneEntrepreneurs. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure you don't miss any episodes, go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, arlebrun.com, or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time.